And we have all seen the successes of, of federalism. Even when we look back over history, say back in the 1990s, which is when I first started in a political office in the legislature, and I, I can still remember where many were disappointed with the federal government, that the federal government wasn't addressing some of the important issues, say like welfare reform. And I can remember in the early 90s where states were beginning to look at welfare reform and ways that we were able to to cut back on, on uh, some of the massive government programs and really just try to reach the people that needed that hand up rather than a hand out and to not have systems in place that encourage people to live off the government but to develop their own potential, their own initiative, their own uh, personal responsibility. And those efforts within the states became so successful that those efforts on welfare reform actually moved up into Washington and later President Clinton signed a piece of legislation on welfare reform many years ago. But once again, that's another example of, of how we've seen the federalist side of, of our government society reach. And then today we come off an election period just a month ago to where we have a new election cycle and we hear a lot in our country of people saying, we gotta have change. Things just aren't quite working right. We want change in our society. And the question might be, well, what kind of change do they think they're going to get? Some of that change might be good. Some of it might not be good. And I have a feeling that a lot of people may not understand what kind of change they may get, too. I've heard a couple of people say since the election that uh, this election and, and the people who were turned out of office, and a lot of my colleagues were turned out of office both on both sides of the aisle, both political parties, that this election wasn't so much a... It wasn't so much a, um, it was more of a principled, I'm sorry, it was more of a performance election than a principled election. i got to get that right. That it was more of a change on wanting um, a performance change of how people performed in office than it was of turning out a principle. There have been a lot of people who have questioned this past election cycle saying, well, has America moved to the left? Or is it really to the center right? And that's where that performance election versus the principal election comes in. And I still believe that our nation is still principally to the right, that we still believe in those good conservative free market value principles, limited government, lower taxes, the strength of the family, the strength of a strong national defense that have made our nation great, the strength of the Constitution, that we as a nation are still principally to the right. It was a performance election that people wanted to turn others out so they could have change. And that's not always bad. Change, change can be good if it's the right kind of change that people will get. And I also think in this past election and as we look forward to the next year in Congress and the issues that we're debating, that the people of our nation also sent a message that they're tired of politics as usual. They're tired of the backbiting, especially in Washington, D.C. And I've had a lot of people ask me, well, is it more partisan in Washington? And, and I can say after serving in the legislative branch, in the executive branch, and now in the national branch, it is more partisan in Washington, D.C. And unfortunately, that's just the way our system works. But people basically said in these past elections, they're tired of politics as usual. They're tired of, of some corruption issues on both sides of the aisle. They're tired of excessive spending of, of federal government money. They're tired of the national debt. They're tired and, and, and worried about, am I going to have a job tomorrow? Especially when you look at our economic condition of our nation, some of the things that we're debating right now in Washington, D.C. People are worried about how am I going to pay to send my children to college. People are worried about their retirements and their, their, fun, their funds and their 401Ks. They're worried about their economic security. And then they're also worried about national security, because economic security, national security all go hand in hand in the public realm. But I still believe, as, as I said, that when you look at the past election cycle and, and how states went, who was elected, who wasn't elected, that it was, a, it was more of a performance election, not so much of a um, principled election. It was a principal election that still holds true. And I think that people still believe the age-old saying that more government is not always the solution to our problems. 
and we're certainly debating that right now. In fact, next week we'll take up that issue with, with the automakers that many times government really is the problem, not so much the solution, more government being the solution to the problem. Well, one of the goals that I have in office, and I know that's one of the goals of ALEC, is to encourage more innovation, more free market ideas, especially to be able to come into our system of, of our economy. And those free market ideals have always held true and worked very, very well for our national economy. And many times we can look to our private sector, and I know we have a lot of private sector representatives here at the room, and I appreciate our host at this breakfast, but we, many times we and Alec can look towards the private sector to help us find those innovative ideas that we can offer up as model legislation. People want basically their elected officials just to work on their problems, just to solve their problems and bring ideas forth that will help their our economies back home be strong, to be able to create jobs and be able to create uh, opportunities, not only for ourselves, but even for our future generations. They're tired of petty politics. They want us to work together. They don't care if you're Republican or Democrat. We may think about that as elected officials, but they just want to know that we're going to get the job done and work on the things that are, are important to them. Each party, of course, is going to have its own ideals. Each party will have its own principles. But in the end, we're going to reach some of the same uh, policy decisions and conclusions that will strengthen our nation, keep us safe, build a strong economy, and, of course, to support the family. And I still believe that that's kind of what people are looking for when we look at our national scene in, in, in Washington, D.C. And, of course, we're coming through a time where we have a new president. President-elect Barack, Barack Obama is forming his administration, his cabinet. He's making announcements every day. He's trying to get his people in place to start working on some of our national challenges with our economy. We've seen some upset with national security around the world with things going on in India and Pakistan. Those are certainly going to be first and foremost on his heart. And then we're all sitting back as elected officials and private citizens wondering, well, how is he going to lead? What will his policies be? We know what candidates say on the campaign trail, and then sometimes we know that it may be something different that you get once those people really get into office, too. So people are watching to see what uh, President-elect Obama will do, but I know one thing for certain, no matter what his policies are or whoever he puts in office, that the principles of free market systems will hold true.